Good morning, colleagues. In uh, connection with what our keynote speaker, Dr. Mashipata, said earlier, the success rate is dependent on three items. Your teaching methods, are your students in class, and are they actively participating? And I'm also of the belief, if you can encourage your students to actively participate and just at least attend all your classes, then we can improve our success rate. Now, with this in mind, um, with the needs that I'm encountering in my classes, I requested my needs with uh, C Factor, is a company that programs specifically um, biometrics and how to implement that onto certain systems, etc. And the actual problem that derived from why I started with this biometrics in class as a prototype was because I'm lecturing very large classes. Um, it's a continuous assessment subject, so, and I'm training teachers how to teach. So they need to be in my classes to actually develop the skills I want them to develop as beginner teachers. And if they're not there, how can I teach them effectively? I use attendance registers, paper-based, every period I threaten them, say, right, if you don't attend my classes, 80%, you're not going to pass, it's continuous assessment. But still, I only, there's only about 75% usually of the 120, 90 students in the class. And if I ask them to participate and ask questions or just to come and present their findings, because they've got to present as much as possible, um, they will just sit there. I, will f I have to physically mention their names and say, come forward, please, come and tell me what is your answer. I've got to drag them from their seats. So I thought, sure, this is very, uh, this is taking a lot of toll from me and a lot of energy during my lessons. Therefore, with the help of Magda Kuyt, my assistant, she programmed it. She's with the company C Factor. Um, she came up with the idea, use a fingerprint device and identify them and record them as they come into class. And let's test it and see how does that work for you. Now, identifying people is not today, it's not nothing new. Way back, even in the Nile region, people used to identify the members of the community by their height, um, their eye color, and then um, also scars on their faces and things like that. And even in the 14th century, it was recorded that the Chinese people used to identify their children with their foot and palm prints. Uh, uh, palm prints. And then also in 1920, I think you've heard his name before, Bertelin. He was actually the guy that started with the fingerprints with the criminals. And then he took those fingerprints of the criminals and he uh, predicted that possible criminals could have the same fingerprints. Um, and then from there it started developing into the technology that we have today. Now, what is biometrics exactly? Now, it is, it, um, it is um, derived from the Greek word bias, which means life, and metron, which means measure. In other words, you measure, measure unique characteristics of a person. It can be his DNA, fingerprint, palm print, um, even his scent, um, his iris, his retina. Different parts of the body can these days be um, identified. If it's recorded on a database, then you can identify that person. Now, if we look at the scanned fingerprint, this is what it looks like when you scan it on the fingerprint device. Most probably many of you have seen it in the banks and where you're going these days. You need to do your biometrics if you uh, apply for a visa or whatever you do. Biometrics are compulsory. Now how does the program work? First of all, you need to enroll. Now the ideal is what we want, because this is a prototype, it is not authorized by TUT yet. Um, 
you need to enroll now all your students. That's what I did initially. With the help of Marta, we enrolled all the students on the laptop with their student numbers, etc. Now that's extremely time consuming. But if when the first year students register and they uh, uh, register their student cards, their biometrics are automatically taken. If we can link that to us, to all the lecturers, then that will be very, very nice because then I don't need to go and sit and compile all these student names and numbers on my computer. Now, first of all, you just log in for the lecture. Then it displays all the names and it's all in red and it shows to you those have not, they are not in your class yet. Then the students scan their fingers as they come in and then automatically it finds the data on the database that you have entered and that will be now on the ITS system as such and then um, it records the student is present and it marks him in green. Now what's nice about this is so often a student comes to you at the end of the year, ma'am, please, I've been in your class every period and now I'm failing, can you help me please, I need extra 5% or whatever. Then it's difficult, even though you've got your paper based uh, attendance registers, it's difficult to go back and recall Go through all your papers, it, uh, you know, as researchers, how much time, time is so precious for us to go through all that papers just to see which term was he present, wasn't he pr present, what, what, what. This I can see immediately. Ah, he was present this year, only 20% in my class. Or he was there 80% or 100% and what he's asking me, requesting is actually very legit. He's got a very good reason. I can believe him, whatever his excuse is. Now this is what we initially did in the class. They came in <laughs> and I recorded. And then, okay, she took a bit longer. But it, can go, it goes very quickly and then I can just go and sit down eventually, okay. Then now the other thing was also active participation. I also, uh, I've been doing that for a long time. I give them like a GSD buck. That means if you actively participate and you give a significant comment in my class, I give you a GSD buck. At the end of the period, you can just come to me, I record that. But that takes also extra. It's <laughs> swipe. And they swipe their fingers. And as they swipe it, it automatically recalls, records to that student's name, 5% extra, because it's continuous assessment. So, and if we can link that to our ITS system, especially us with continuous assessment as well, that will be fantastic. So it's already recorded, the student can see exactly how much did he uh, um, gain with his lessons during the semester, how much does he still need for his averages to come. Now, I wanted to t uh, test this prototype and what I did is um, the second semester lectures, I warned them. I collected the data, the fingerprints, etc., but I didn't record that. And they were rewarded, were rewarded with GSD bucks because they've be, uh, that has been done since the beginning of the year. And then I compared the second semester where the fingerprint device was not used with the third semester. And I warned them, when you step into my class the third semester, I'm going to, rec I'm going to record with a fingerprint device. And you need to be there in my classes. Now, okay, the research, what I wanted to test is, can, can it encourage um, active class participation and can I record it accurately? And can I also record um, the attendance accurately? Now, this was the second semester. The results, the top one was the class uh, um, attendance and the bottom one, the class um, participation. Now, if we look there, the first lecture, 65% attended and then 29% earned their class box. Now, 
I asked them where were the others because only 65% were present. And they said, no, they're still at home. There's a tendency after the recess, maybe all of you encountered that, after the recess, students tend to come two weeks later. And then you ask them, why were you not in class? No, we've got financial problems and didn't have transport, etc., etc. So then I believe it, I don't know what these situ financial situations are, etc. Second lecture, it starts picking up because now more of the students are on campus. Third lecture, it was going well. Fourth lecture, they were writing a test, so everybody was in class and they were asking questions. They wanted scope because they wanted to do well. And in the fifth and sixth, it started to decline again because now we're going to teaching practice and now they were uh, um, already packing up their stuff again for wherever they're going. Now the third semester was interesting because when they first step in the first lecture, it was amazing to see 78%, still not 100%, 78% were in class. And strange enough, 12 only 12% now had financial problems not being able to come to class. Or most probably the others planned better. I just know, I don't know, I just make the assumptions. Um, they planned financially better so that they know they should be in the GSD class, the first lecturer, not the second lecturer. And it picked up. The second lecture, it was amazing. It was 85% and 42 Third lecture, they had the sports day, and that was amazing. I thought I was going to have nobody in class, and still they came to class. So, um, and the fourth lecture, and the fifth, and the sixth also were very high scores that showed to be. But also, I make the assumption it was the third semester, it was the end of our continuous assessment, so the possibility is there. Uh, they realize, okay, I'm failing my GSD now, maybe I should come to class, participate actively, and then um, I can earn some more marks as such. Um, but nevertheless, when I compared the final results, when I compare the two with each other, what I found, there was an overall improvement just by that finger, but I think they didn't know exactly what was happening now, what am I doing now? Um, that fingerprint device um, encouraged them to come to class, even though it was just 12% more of them. And then also, 8% more actively participated in class. Um, now, I just want to point out the disadvantages and the advantages. For me, the disadvantage was it took a lot of my time to enroll all these students and collect their fingerprints. But like I said, if student registrations can do that for us and just link it to our ITS, there's no problem, I won't have any work to do. But now, the advantages are numerous. It saves you lots of time. Sending attendance registers through to large classes. They sign on for each other. The other thing I found out the other day is they wrote tests for each other. They pay each other. Second year's academic performers write tests for the first year that is not doing so well. You go and write because now there are 610 students. Now, how can you now see who's, not, who's writing and who's not writing? So, now this eliminates that to a big, and no longer they can sign on in the classes for their friends because now they need a 85% attendance for continuous assessment and then they just sign on for each other. Now it's impossible for me to go and count every head in the class and check if that is according to my lists. That's time consuming. And then they can't swap their cards with their friends anymore. Uh, you can accurately record it. The marks are immediately available if the ITS links us in. And then all students are included and all gets a fair chance to improve his marks. Like um, our keynote speaker also said that we shouldn't say they have got learning barriers or whatsoever. You should design projects and give them an opportunity. Maybe he's a good speaker. Give an opportunity to participate and earn his marks during class participations. Um, the other thing that is very nice is the parents can log in in the ITS as well. So now I'm paying for my child to go to university, but I can log in and check. 
did he attend his classes? No. How much, uh, what did he receive? How much uh, percentage and you know, all that. All that data can also be linked to the parents. So the parents can also log in to check the attendance and also the students' marks. That's just a few possibilities. There are numerous possibilities that can be attached to this prototype as such. Now people, that is all I have to say. All I say, this is a cost-effective device. It costs very few uh, for those little fingerprints. Uh, the one that I bought was a few, not a thousand rand even, it was a few hundred rand. Right, so it's a cost-effective device. We just need to implement it if it is agreed. Thank you. Now you're welcome to ask any questions, but I would love my program assistant, Marta Keit, is sitting there. She's got all the legal implications and everything, and she's the clever one here on the program itself. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much for, for this presentation. And I'm looking at it, something like just managing class attendance may look yeah. like it's very simplistic and all that. But I'm, I'm just reflecting on one of the things that I mentioned, the issue of early identification for risk factors in students. And one of the simplest or basic issue is this issue of class attendance. Yeah. And if you, you really have this near accurate measure of monitoring just class attendance, it is very possible that you are able to see which students have tendencies for, you know, falling yeah. at risk, and, and then you are able to identify that very early, as you can see, that pattern across, you know, all your, your, your classes. That's so true. 